What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of All Access Magic. Let's notice it's a little bit different. Welcome to the show. Thank you, everybody, that's been waiting in the chat. We have a little bit later episode tonight, and we are joined by a really good friend of mine, an incredible manipulator, uh, probably the best manipulator in the world. Uh, I'm going to say it. Uh, you know, let's just, you know, we don't need Yuho Jin. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Alan. The man, the myth, the legend, Semenov. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what an epic intro. Right? The, yeah, that, yeah that, that, that was intense. That the, was intense. Double man, double myth, double legend. That's that's yeah. what you deserve. And good to meet you, my double agent. <laughs> yeah, good to see you again, man. I even wore a blaze. You know, you were you were a blazer. Yeah. You're blazer. dressed in art. Blazer, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Sure. Uh, thank you for joining the show, everybody. That's in the chat. Ryan will be here in a, a little bit. He is just uh, testing some audio things. Um, he came into the show a little bit earlier and sounded like a, a robot. So <laughs> we're just waiting <laughs> on him. <laughs> Didn't want to make you wait any longer. We were already getting roasted in the chat from uh from Lindsay. um <laughs> we've uh we've got Lindsay saying this pre-show part is training me for my next dmv visit <laughs> thanks thanks everybody in the chat for uh for sticking around and waiting i've got uh ryan in the other chat so i can hear him and see that his audio is uh your audio is still very much messed up good sir Yep, it's horrible. All right, I'm going to move out of this one. So, Alan, how have you been? The last time I saw you was Blackpool. What have you been up to? Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I mean, with all the madness going on, it was it was quite a good, a mixed, insane start of the year. We met yeah. in Blackpool. It was really, really fun. We got to drink. Not as yeah. much as we wanted to. Not but as we much as we drink. wanted to, but it was still a fun time. we got to meet time. in person. Exactly. We had only yeah. jammed uh, like on, on Instagram and Skype and stuff. So it was awesome to get to actually meet uh, in person yeah. and get to see that you do all of the same things that you show on jams all in person and do it like perfectly. <laughs> and it was insane. Um, is there yeah. anything that you'd care? I know you were just like playing with cards earlier. Is there anything that you'd care to demonstrate? No, you no pressure. I don't, need, I don't need to put so, you on the spot. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can fun. check out his Instagram. I can I can try and show something just for fun, like, like okay. one, oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh anyway, just, yeah, just idea. just just some casual, just a little, just a little, just a little bit, just a little bit, manipulation, just a little bit. He's a so good. So uh, yeah, you're just an absolute beast. Um, now you have a very unique act uh, in manipulation. You have your limbo act. Now, if anybody hasn't seen it, you can see some clips and bits and pieces on Instagram. And there was also, I think, an older version of the act on YouTube, right? Um, is yeah, there, there is. anything that's more like recent? What's the most recent version of the act that people can see and where can they find it? So, Oh, they can really find it on Instagram. There is like a short teaser I uploaded on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, like currently with like I mean, a two minute video with, I mean, not giving the whole act away, but with mm. some more updated styles and everything and different moments here and there so yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah because you have so many really really unique moments in that act uh i mean i love like the 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 levitation here and then like i mean that's like just really iconic and then what you were describing about some of the new phases that you're working on where the cards are kind of coming to life and you're battling with them was like so so creative so that's awesome and how long yeah. have you been working on that act well, this act, I mean, it starts off with me kind of transitioning from being heavily uh, influenced by Korean magicians and mm -hmm. Korean manipulators, such as Yuho Jin, Lucas, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I was with, you know, like that slow Korean style spinning mm -hmm. cards, which is nice, but it's not me. Mm -hmm. And it came to a point that, okay, I wanted to do something a bit different and i was really influenced by some brazilian magicians actually mm. uh william seven and the charlatans in 2017 uh, the both of them got the grand prix at the fism latin america so and, and they have like acts that you would in theory say that okay it's just a cups and balls act and a telepathy act mm. but they do it in such a theatrical way with a character with a style with a there's uh, an entire stylistic part of it, an aesthetic that isn't usual to magic and mm. Brazilian people. Uh, <laughs> so 
I, I got kind of influenced on that and mm. I started trying to, I mean, it's not only that, but on the moment I was kind of also in my own anxiety as a teenager, a little bit depressed. Mm. And as, as a joke, I told my friend, actually, Renato Baroli, kisses mm. to you. Nice, Renato. From Brazil, yeah. I told him that, oh, it, what, wouldn't it be funny if, you know, just in the end of the act, just the letter turns into a gun and he just shoots himself as a joke. Like, it started mm. as a joke and talking through the idea, actually, it could be an act. So mm. I started going on this idea and developing, taking techniques that are usually more like, hey, look, I have a card. Look, it's going to vanish. I still have a little bit of these moments here and there mm. because people have to see what's going on. But they build it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, trying to make manipulation look a little bit more deformed, right? A little bit more um like if you would make cards appear and you had no technique you wouldn't make it appear as a fan like that you know mm. so how would that be yeah. wouldn't that be more more chaotic more you know like so also influenced by hector mancha a little bit mm. here and there i mean so all of that kind of build it up into my way of thinking in the act and that's like a five-year old journey so wow. five years basically that, that's all in these and still changing constantly changing coming up with new ideas and putting new bits so yeah wow that's crazy yeah now this is the renato that i know as well right is this the renato that has a crazy spellbound yes yes that one over there that one oh yeah 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 Yeah. renato is an absolute beast um very nice guy as well yes but yeah, that's that's really crazy, man. So five years devoted to this act. And I know that you have another act as well that's like Shadows, right? Um, when you do a show, how many different acts do you have? Is it your, your Shadow oh. Act and Limbo Act mainly? Or do you do like other things in between? Oh, I actually have more acts. Like I have a mm. one-hour show. Mm. But of course, it's not like all like the same material as I would do like uh, on the main act. Mm. Um, currently, I, ha- I could say I have like four acts that like are more unique and like not, not necessarily mm-hmm. unique, but more into my style and something I had to actually work and create and mm. develop. So four acts and that, that would be shadows as well. Limbo. I have uh, more of a comedic entrance with popcorn that is completely oh, interesting. different from, from the other two. And there is a new one I'm working on, which is on the table, but you'll see oh, yeah, when so, it's ready. Oh. So, so yeah. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So the the popcorn act is that something that involves cards at all, or it's a totally different no thing? No, it's wow. literally like a, it's like an audience control act with. So so I go, I enter, I'm eating popcorn, and I fall. A lot of popcorn falls to the floor. I'm like, damn. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna take it from the floor. And then I have an the brilliant idea of taking corn, placing it in into my hand, and I ask the audience to clap once. And then mm. smoke comes out and a lot of popcorn just appear from my hand. And then of that, all right, I'm going to place the entire corn on the box and basically audience clap control with an intense music. Anyway, it's on the Instagram. Mm. You can see oh, it wow. later. And, yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll have to check it out. Now we have yeah. Ryan here. He uh, hopefully. How you doing, Ryan? There is no sound. And now it's now it's a robot. Now it's an EDM festival. No, it stopped actually. It stopped. the The EDM festival stopped. However, comma, we uh, we still Burning have... Man style. Yeah, Burning <laughs> Man style. <laughs> uh, well, sad face. <laughs> yeah, um, sad face. Yeah, very sad face. Well, we'll see Ryan eventually. <laughs> um, in the meantime. Um, we'll just keep chatting about this. So now the, um, it's interesting, like the, the development of the, the limbo act that it's taken so many years, was that originally made with like competition in mind or what was kind of the, the impetus for, for developing that act? Well, originally, yeah, it was competition. And the idea was to go to phase them, join all of that and, and do all that trajectory that, you know, as a kid, sorry, but as a kid, you had like Yuho Jin, Shin Lim, Yan Frisch, all these Yan, this uh, FISM winners going on. And, and, and the path as a magician of making an act would be, oh, 
So I got to compete there and win the lot to perform. Mm. Uh, so if it started out being a competition act. And now I don't really see it much as a competition act anymore. And even though I, I'm going to compete, I kind of shifted my focus a little bit mm. more for theater and like not, not really perform to magicians, but more for audiences. More for audiences. And I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to, I mean, uh, lay audiences, not necessarily just like, um, Hmm. Magic, magic conventions or magic festivals so yeah is it a different mentality Maybe. when you're creating an act with magicians in mind and performing it for a competition where uh, compared to just performing it for lay audiences of course of course there is uh, uh, but something cool about learning from like making an act for competition is that your mind starts creating other acts with the same process in mind with the same hmm. structure and 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 thinking so you, so you start to okay how can i make this also interesting visually or in terms of method or or whatever but also interesting in terms of presentation mm. right so and that idea so in competition you would focus more on trying to fool magicians with outstanding effects right uh but sometimes if, if you think only about competition you forget to add a little bit of your style this is so you, you're thinking way too much on the competition part and ideas so as a magician mm. you focus way too much on methods and effects and you forget to uh to focus on the presentation part of it and mm. i think it's cool to combine both actually so take yeah. the uh competition mentality but eventually if you win the award you're gonna go and perform to to audience to larger audiences if that's like the process you're taking eventually you're gonna perform to different audiences and you need to be interesting and in, not necessarily because you have to but in terms of style so i think if you think about the audiences in general what you want to like make how can i say if you're trying to make something different for the audience i think it kind of matches the idea of creating mm. effects and methods to fool magicians yeah I think yeah that's how can I, how I can. Yeah. It's it. like trying to find that happy medium between like really deceptive methods and things, but not focusing so much on method that you forget about the entertainment, but then also yeah. like having an entertaining piece that still, if there were magicians in the audience, they would really appreciate it as well. Like, cause you can never predict if there's going to be magicians in the audience as well, you know? So it's like, you know, exactly. might as well have something just for those people that are a little bit more knowledgeable about magic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And so, um, yeah, the act keeps evolving. Do you feel like it'll ever be done or is it just a constant iteration on all of the acts? It's never going to be done. I think no, nothing yeah. ever gets done in, in this kind of uh, yeah. format because eventually you get bored. Eventually you do the same effect so many times that people already know what's going to happen. If you're doing it for magicians or let's say, I mean, if, if it starts to get boring to you in a way, naturally you start wanting to upgrade something so i mean i'm trying to make a solid structure that i change only bits and pieces mm. so yeah. the main moments remain but what happens in between could change and mm. that's i think uh what, what, what we ah, i forgot my my english mm. right now because sorry yeah. trying to get back to it but eventually you start creating a structure that you don't change so much and you only change the links from the intro from the middle part from the ending but yeah answering basically you can't mm. stop changing in my opinion yeah and it's an interesting kind of storytelling that you're doing because it's not just i feel like a lot of manipulation acts that you see um, there are some that do have a narrative, but a lot of manipulation acts that you see are just just visuals. It's like a, just a compilation of visuals. It's like, here's a really cool visual. Here's another really cool visual. Here's another. And it's just like, da da da, da And it's just a ton of productions. Um, and there's not necessarily a story that you're bringing the people along other than I'm making cards appear. Um, whereas you have like a, a cohesive narrative that people are able to follow and they understand that there's this whole you know suicide and purgatory kind of aspect that's going into play in the story um now how it, what is your process like when it comes to like visual storytelling like how is it that you can tell a story without saying anything through just visuals and through magic moments and um 
and to tell it such an abstract story as well. Yeah, that, that's actually what you said late, like the last part, abstract. It is totally what the act is in a way, because I have the the story I want to tell in like if I, I can explain to you what it is, but it's uh, it's way too long of a story to tell in a six minute visual act with music mm. and you're not speaking, you're not talking, you have six minutes to give the impression that you're in a place that is mm. uh, a little bit uh, not real, like, not a little mm. bit like completely different from reality. So you have to try um, to make like your character and moves and what happens inside the universe feel like as if it's not something that usually happens, right? So that's mm. a little bit of my problem uh, in manipulation as well, because if you're just making cards appear, eventually the logic is, oh, he's trying to break reality. But that reality is basically just cards vanishing and appearing. So mm. that's kind of a shitty reality. Yeah. <laughs> because like if you would be able to do something with all those magnificent powers you have, uh, cards, I mean, I love watching a manipulation act, but if you if you think in terms of, of how you're in, interacting with the audience, that's something I can't really do. Uh, I love to do it well. Like uh, Yuho Jin does it well. Um, for, like, I think it's my favorite manipulator in terms of, uh like cohesive structuring even though mm. he's not telling anything uh or like how it's can like I you can explicitly? follow and it, it feels like there's a beginning middle and end even though it's not yeah. necessarily like a story story that he's telling yeah it's like a piano piece right so yeah. the music goes on and it finishes and 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 when it's like you necessarily have words lyrics in it but you feel something and that's something to work with it's something that actually influenced me a lot so if you can do that with car manipulation, you can also add more stuff into it. Mm. And how I try to to see the story. Um, all right, let's say I want to do something about I don't know bipolarity. So I'm bipolar mm. or something, or mm. talk about that. How can I make that kind of be subjective, but also bring that emotion instead of trying to focus on the mental illness you focus on the sensation of being mm. bipolar so if people are watching a six mm. minute visual piece your mission in that in that idea or my mission at least is to focus on lights trying to play with lights mm. uh music selection is very important um i try not to select uh music that is known so i wouldn't mm. go to many famous composers that are people that you know would be the go-to composer mm. to so you see i go on spotify i make a playlist so every week spotify recommends me a, a new track that is similar to that style so that's one so you try and find a bipolar soundtrack. playlist <laughs> like exactly like exactly yeah. what what would it be what would it feel like if you could hear bipolarity how would that be mm. like um and also with the lights, so you can change lights. You can have one light turn blue and the other light turn red. I mean, not Eric Chen, but I mean like the, the terms of, of light kind of changing, mm. switching, yeah. and moods switching, rhythm, the rhythm can change. And then with that, I have an idea of what I can do of effect. So mm. I think of the color of what I'm wearing. So if the light is gonna be switching from red to blue, then if I wear white, all white, the light is gonna reflect more on my costume and that's gonna mm. give a different effect to to the audience so those things keep uh developing the story in my mind because i don't have necessarily a subject that i want to talk about so let me give you an idea of an act i'm mm. doing i'm working on right now uh mm. it's like uh it's an idea it's like a script let's say like, mm. we have this idea and we're gonna try to finish it so the idea is this this guy has been diagnosed insane like he's not well he's crazy as mm. fuck but he he's trying to prove that he's not gonna he's not insane he's trying to prove to prove it that he's not mad and he puts this camera in front of the the table and that justifies the use of projection screens in your mm. eyes so i start like as if vlog 263 yeah i'm trying to prove i'm not going insane and then i put a blindfold and I drink the pill, and if the camera and the audience eventually sees what's going on, then I'm not crazy. And with that, you can play. So mm. it's tiny bits of uh, 
of ideas uh, of um, how can I say more of a, an emotional weirdness than necessarily a story that is uh, clear from beginning, middle, and ending. Mm, yeah, say. it's like you're kind of just yeah. exploring the character and the space and everything, and and letting people just feel the uh, the character, but not giving them all of the answers. You're not like telling them, you know, this is what you're supposed to think. <laughs> you're kind of showing yeah. them something and letting them interpret it. And slowly, and the thing that happens, because this is a process I have with Limbo right now. Oh, Ryan is back. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, I think I got hey. it working. Now I yes. can hear it very well. This sounds here. great. Finally, we have Ryan. I came all so, back on, and my camera went toast, and so I'm on <laughs> this camera. It looks great. It's uh, all good. But, so, yeah, and the process with Limbo that, that was happening is that in the, in, it still has a little bit of complications because I want people to kind of understand it a little bit clearer, not necessarily to make it obvious, but I want to give more hints of, of what's going on. So if I start the act in the blackout and I have no gun, and I'm just doing this and I look around and I start producing cards, that was gonna, that's going to be like a very odd mm. transition because, oh, so suicide cards, well, what the fuck going on? But if I have nothing, I look around, there's a lot of, pieces of paper on the floor, like lots of letters around. I look, I have blood on my face, then music stops. I remember something, bah, gun sound effect, open hand, and then letters appear from the other side. So you got, my, mm. you got yourself shot and here you have the letters. People can kind of link, oh, the gun, letters. Oh, okay, that, that's, that sounds like suicide, mm. that looks like suicide, or maybe something like that, and then Throughout the act, I give more hints that will kind of um, give people the, the idea of what the act is about. Mm. So that, yeah. that will be the process a little bit. Yeah. So just giving them a bunch of different visuals that like lead them and they slowly kind of unveil. It's like you're peeling back layers of like a rose, you know, it's like you're getting, you're slowly getting to like the deeper story, um, but they have to interpret it themselves. Like at first they're just asking yes. a bunch of questions. They're like, what's going on? What's going on? What? Yeah. And then yeah. it slowly reveals. That's awesome. So Ryan is here i i missed all of it most of it i, no, I put sorry. it on my phone uh this point in lindsay lindsay said we don't care about ryan all good all oh, good oh geez <laughs> lindsay, <Wow. a> jerk. <laughs> um but uh alan how's it going how's it going ryan it good, uh, good to good. finally hear you yeah yeah i don't <laughs> well, know what i had to shut my whole computer down and restart everything yeah. and it's just been probably sitting on way too long like since the start of COVID, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's way that's long ago. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, been, cool. it's been a couple of years since I turned my computer off, probably. So yeah, but yeah, we were just talking about Alan's act Limbo, which is a really beautiful manipulation act that has this kind of suicide theme, and uh, and people should definitely check it out online uh, on his Instagram and see some of the visual moments. But it's interesting because like Ryan and I, we perform. And we use our words, <laughs> you know, yeah. if we're trying to tell a story, we can just tell a story, you know, like, you know, Ryan as a mentalist is doing his performance and it's, it, it, there's not really much that's visual at all. You know, it's entirely cerebral and with, with the, you know, the people as the only kind of props, you know, um, obviously there are a few things that you do have that are, that are visual in the show and stuff, but it, it's like, you're using your words for, to carry the show. Whereas yeah. Alan, you don't have that at all. And you have to be able to get people to understand the narrative that's going on entirely through your body language, like what you were talking about, the lighting, the, you know, your character, your costume. Um, and that's just kind of fascinating. So like when you start off with a performance, you were, you were kind of just describing it of like an idea of like, Oh, we have this script and now I'm going to try and interpret it visually. When you're starting with a story, do you start with like this is kind of a written out like this would be what the script would be if I was talking and then try and turn it into visuals or like how does it kind of come to form? Um, it kind of starts with stupid ideas that eventually turn out into <laughs> interesting <laughs> emotions. So, so let's mm. say um, I had this idea about like um, I'm not I don't want to I mean who cares anyway. So the idea is this: basically, I break everything. And everything goes rewinds. Everything goes back in time. So I break everything. Mm -hmm. And then I go, I calm down, I take a cigarette, and I start walking back slowly. 
not rewind it, but I just walk back slowly. So imagine this. Let me start from the very beginning. I'm sitting in a chair, blindfolded. Uh, take out the blindfold. Fuck. Take out a cigarette. I light the cigarette. When I light the cigarette and I take a puff, the chair I was sitting disintegrates mm. into like uh, whatever blocks pieces or just breaks. I look around and say, fuck, again. I start breaking everything. The table in front of me, just turn it around with all the objects on top of it, just fall down. I kick the uh, the, the trash can, the trash goes away with all its contents inside. And I see a mirror, I look at the mirror, then I break the mirror because I uh, fuck it. And then I start calming down a little bit. The cigarette is almost finished. Then the cigarette restores, goes back in time, rewinds. I take the cigarette, I look forward, I put the blindfold on, and I start walking back slowly. And as I go walking back, everything I broke, the big mirror in front of me, the trash can, everything just rewinds, goes back in time, restores, the trash goes back, the can goes up, the table and everything just goes back in time, and the chair that is integrated restores, and I sit down, lights only on me, and the blindfold that is white starts bleeding, and that's blackout. And it starts with a stupid idea with, okay, wouldn't it be fun if I just broke a mirror and everything lined it? Then you start thinking, oh, wouldn't it be fun if I also broke this? And now I have an idea of an act about time that is Mm. messing me up. Not because time is messing me up, but about the uh, sensibility of time, right? Mm. um, That even though it goes on and on, you know, so, so you kind of with that, you have multiple interpretations of what the act could be about. And visually, you play with a lot of things. So that's how I go through. That's an idea. And it's well stuck in my mind. And I keep going on with many ideas. So one day I may see something, oh, that idea. It might, wouldn't it be funny if that happened? And with that little piece, that little visual idea, I start linking with, well, what else would be interesting to fit with that moment? And that's how I kind of see uh, my next act going forward. I don't really want to focus too much on, on manipulation and I want to go more into different objects, things that mm. don't really are traditional in magic um, or expected to be like when you have a magic act. So, all right, mm. if you're in a table act, okay, so you have a table and you're sitting and you're doing lapping and you have balls mm. in there and you do and the format, the form factor is very similar. Mm. You can still do that in the table, but also switch the styling of that, the language mm. of what's going on. But with the, even with the same for, formula, you can put the aesthetic on top. And that's kind of my challenge now and a little bit of my, my struggle with the next act going forward because I want to close the book on a big chapter that was manipulation and, and limbo and that story, which I feel like I already told. Mm. And I want to finish it, polish it, polish it to the point that I already have the structure and I go to something else. So mm-hmm. that's a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, so it's like if you come up with a new visual or something that could work for Limbo, you can revisit it. But it's like it's already kind of you know hung up at least for a little while. Yes, yeah. You wanna you wanna have new ideas, fresh ideas, <laughs> and go on. Yeah. So I missed the start of the podcast, so you may have already answered my <laughs> question. Um, but uh, who are some of you? Like obviously, like Blaze said, our acts are very, uh, and especially mine is like blaze does a lot of visual stuff mine is 100 percent speaking uh and and a lot of it uh and so who are some uh silent acts that have been inspirational to you uh along the way oh all right that's a good one i love jan frisch i mm. think right now he's in my top one because I have like many like magicians. I'm he's in my top one (laughs) because he's in my top one. He's He's my number one because lately, because uh, and I'll tell you why, because he's like literally different from the entire form factor. If you go and think cups and balls, the other fish is like my favorite now because he literally took his uh, plot that is like tell a magician, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to FISM with what cups and balls, (laughs) (laughs) but. The man goes with cups and balls, but in a completely different form factor and yep. does a different version of that act as well with blackouts and all that. And to me, like, I mean, in the terms of um, styling now and someone I's, I, I'm really influenced in is Jan Frisch currently. 
not necessarily in method, but in, in like, wow, that, that's really beautiful. Tell her, of course, tell her. Yeah. Okay, I think I messed up saying I'm for stop one. I think I'm going to put them all in different because yeah. tell her also has a very important piece on me because mm. uh, the shadows act with, mm. the, um, with the blood and the flowers. With, with the blood. With the it's so short, but it means a lot more to me than many acts, many mm. in, uh, cards with any numbers or whatever. <laughs> like, it means more than a 10 minute act or a five minute act with many visuals just with that piece it got to influence me with limbo as well with the blood idea that that it's not a, a problem to do blood magic in on like not blood magic but i mean um magic that would kind of be heavy right so teller as well i would say i had to say you hojin as well um brilliant manipulator and technically i owe a lot on learning there is so much more it's hard to to pick so yeah i could say tom molica as well completely different mm, tom molica is completely so great, different yeah. but i love mario lopez helped me a lot influenced uh, my thinking now to change from trying to focus on effects 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 and so yeah there's so many magicians. <laughs> so follow up to that. Anybody outside of magic? That... There are so many. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I love David Bowie. I love Jack Nicholson. Mm. I love uh, filmmakers in general. I think I'm more influenced than from by filmmakers than magicians because mm. they actually do real magic, actually. Because even though, yeah. like, I mean, in, in the sense that no one really questions what's going on. Like, all right, I'm going to a movie, then I'm just going to sit down and enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the story of whatever is going on there. And and as a filmmaker, that's also magic. I don't know. I, I, think I, kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a cliche to say like, like George Méliès and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of filmmakers as well. So, yeah, those are nice. some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could say, go on and on, say like, I don't <laughs> know, maybe Jack Nicholson. Pacino, De Niro, and all of that, but they're completely mm. different from what I do, and I don't, I don't do yeah. kind of work they do, but mm. in some way, they influence. Mm. Well, they're actors, and in your performance is very character heavy, you know, like so, like there's definitely a lot of acting that goes into what you're doing, so it makes sense that your influences would be actors. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Uh, now we've talked in, in the past about the idea of like the um, the assassin, the victim, and the witness of magic, and in your different acts, you kind of fill those roles differently. You know, um, like in Limbo, how would you describe what your role is, or would you be up for describing the the differences between those three, like very briefly for the, for the audience, so that they understand the context? All right. Let, let so I think it's fascinating. Your lecture, your thought, lecture I think it's fascinating role. your thought process on it. So let's in magic we have this theory from Topaz. Uh, not I don't think it's I'm not sure if it's his idea from the very beginning. Actually, it's a lot older than that. But let's say it's from Topaz because <laughs> <laughs> conceptuality <laughs> and documentation is not really my good thing. But here we go. Um, there is the assassin, the victim, and the witness in magic. And what would that be? The assassin would be the one causing the effect to happen. So if you see a magician, hey, look. The card. So, okay, you're the assassin. You're the one causing magic to happen. But if you're a victim, that would be completely opposite. You'll be the victim of magic. So let's say there is Cardini, right? Cardini was producing cards, and he would throw them away. And oh, fuck again, it, it keeps going on and on and it keeps appearing. That's a, already a different um, interpretation of the same effect. So we have the assassin that causes the effect, the victim that is being attacked by magic or something like that. And you have the, the witness, which would be basically observing, um, not absorbing, sorry, uh, observing. Observing, yeah. Yes, magic around you. So let's say a ball floats and falls. You're just looking at it. You're not necessarily making it happen or you're not necessarily being in, uh, attacked by it. So what happens if you combine the three of them? Mm -hmm. So you, you don't have to be the assassin all the time. You don't have to be the victim all the time. And you don't have to be the witness. I mean, you could do an entire act 
out of any of those three separately and individually, and it would work. But what happens if you combine the three of them? And I mean, it's more of a theory, something I, analyzing Ann Frisch actually uh, noticed, that he combines, if you see the entire act, he's a victim, kind of. But there are moments that he actually becomes the assassin or a witness or a victim. Actually, he switches more from victim to witness constantly. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily know what's going on, if he's being attacked or and you have a different emotion. So it's not predictable, right? So your magic starts feeling unpredictable because you don't expect him to make the ball appear. You expect something to happen to him. And eventually, he just observes what's going on. So if you, in my act, let's say in Limbo, um, something that I do have, I do have moments that I control what's going on. But there are moments that I don't really want to control them. There are moments that things happen to me. But mostly, I'm in control of what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm discovering my reality. So as soon as I, I do the gun moment, and I look around, and the, paper, the letters appear, what would that be? Because I'm not making a gesture, look, it's going to appear. Or I'm not making a gesture of, of sadness or of a victim or of a witness. I'm just, something happened and I have letters here. That will be more of a witness. But still, there is something out of mm -hmm. those other two. And then with that, I take one letter. I start tearing it into pieces and I start throwing the pieces and cards start appearing. Mm -hmm. What would that be, right? So in that moment, you start combining a little bit of everything of the assassin, the victim, and the witness into individual fragmented moments that make mm -hmm. the entire act. So to me, I think it's very important if you're doing storytelling acts uh, to actually just take a look at those uh, theories because they can actually add a layer to your, to your magic that you don't mm -hmm. necessarily know. Or maybe if you do know and you have the idea, um, you can kind of make sure that, all right, we can actually explore a little bit more, you know? So, mm. yeah, it's good to talk with people sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and re yeah. No, it's a, definitely a good mentality because it's like you're creating, it's like you're a character that's capable of doing impossible things, but a, he also exists in a world where impossible things can happen. So it's like, you know, he's not necessarily in control of all the stuff that happens in this world and you kind of just build that environment. So that's really cool. That's awesome. It's like building an atmosphere of magic. Yeah. Yeah, bit by bit. <laughs> That's dope. Well. Well. Do you know what time it is? I think <laughs> we know what time it is. I mean, first, Lindsay said that now I'm her favorite, but or his favorite. His favorite. Right. I, Lindsay, I said her, but I mean his. Um, but I don't know. Ben also said that uh, Alan yeah. uh, Sofa looks like, dude, $5, five dollar foot logs <laughs> um, tagged on top of each other. Five, by the, by the way, funny funny story, just to give a little bit of a context of where I am. Uh, I am in the north of Brazil. Like, I just returned back to Brazil, and it's I didn't plan to work at all here in this region. Mm. And I'm in a trailer. So basically, this is all a trailer, mm. completely less minute, and I'm living like this kind of, I don't know, uh, <laughs> traveling touring vibe so mm. for now i do have these five dollar <laughs> what long, <laughs> long. Yeah. Uh, well so, since you are in brazil i mean uh renato said this earlier says uh he's like the teller of brazil Alan and me were actually thinking of starting performing together as brazilian version of penn and teller <laughs> I think yeah, that would well, be really yeah. dope because you I guys would be amazing actually, together. But I don't know how much Renato is like Penn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had a joke in mind, but I don't want to be canceled right now. So yeah, that would be that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a negative, Renato. That is a negative. Uh, it's not ever happening. <laughs> Just by that comment. That yeah fun. no but that would be fun actually um let, let's totally do it let's let's do it 100 <laughs> and yeah let's make it our own let, let's actually steal let's go to penn and teller as you know the brazilian version of penn and teller and see what happens you Wouldn't should that be fun? uh yeah you should oh go there on there was two us. guys that went on penn and teller uh, on fool us and they acted like penn and teller and it was horrendous but you guys should do it and do it really they, well. they did it terribly they did it like they shitty really it was bad. so bad it was so really bad so like <laughs> cringy, cringy <laughs> really? the whole time so but uh 
and uh, Lindsay says that uh, he saw Penn on uh, Penn and Teller on the Mass Singer the other week. It's, who was singing? Oh, they were on. Who Penn was, was on the Mass Singer. Mass Singer. No way. Penn and Teller. I did see in a commercial that they were on there, so oh, they must crazy. have been terrible singers. Um, but that would have been so interesting to see uh, Teller singing. Yeah. <laughs> It's the only time you hear his voice. Uh, but speaking of singing, <laughs> we've got a jingle coming at you. We do have a jingle, so let's give it to him. Let's give it to him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. Put two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. So, you've got two minutes on the clock, 20 questions. Are you ready? Uh, we're going to go back and forth, rapid fire. Give us the most honest answers that you can, uh, and we'll see how many questions you can make it through. You ready? You ready, Alan? There There's a leaderboard, go. so we'll see, how, we'll see how fast you can answer, how many you can make it through. We will start in five, four, three, three. two. Dream vacation destination. Japan. Biggest pet peeve? I don't know. <laughs> something, you, something you hate. Um, hate. Uh, biggest mistake during a performance? Oh, loop expl uh, just went away, broke. Yeah. Uh, what always makes you laugh? Uh, cringe, cringe moments in Blackpool. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. Stuff like that. What's your secret talent? Oh, I'm a, actually kind of like to sing. First Not time you ever saw a magic trick? I was six years old. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Invisibility, of course. Dream performance venue? Oh, Carnegie Hall, wouldn't it be fun? Mm. Uh, <laughs> most cherished memory? Oh... Hanging out with my mother in Moscow recently, actually, it was beautiful. Yeah. Favorite food? Pizza. Favorite movie? Blade Runner. 2049, actually. Sorry. What's <laughs> the worst job you ever had? I was a translator for an event with Vladimir Putin. Ooh, uh, favorite magician. <laughs> Stop right there. We're gonna favorite cancel. Uh, so Alan's yep. canceled. If you uh, if you won, <laughs> you won the lottery, what's the first thing you'd buy? Oh, a ticket to Japan. That's it. Uh, what's your most highly recommended magic product or book? Hmm. Good question. I would recommend. Buying Air by Alan Simonoff and <laughs> Nice. Uh, speaking of books. Speaking of books. Favorite uh, book. You can't yeah, is there a mind. book that you're is there a book that you've uh, read recently or an audio book you've listened to that you really like? Uh, Isaac Asimov Foundation. I just got into it. Really good. Oh. Nice. What nice. is that? Yeah. Now, is that an audiobook or is that's not an audiobook? No, no, I read it physical lecture. Oh, okay. Nice. Foundation. Novel by I Isaac Asimov. Okay. Yeah, Interesting. Nice. It is uh, for those of us who are not interested in uh, reading it, it is available <laughs> on Audible and it is narrated by Scott Brick um, Foundation by Isaac Asimov. What is it about? <laughs> it's about a, a guy that calculates uh, a lot <laughs> and he gets to see the future through calculations. And basically the mastermind of the foundation. I don't know how to brief it up, but yeah. You gotta calculate a lot. So, uh, I mean, we just asked you this, but, uh, but Lindsay is a, a weekly viewer and said, I got one more question, Alan. Uh, when you were traveling, 
Uh, what do you do to pass the time? Do you read any books or listen to audiobooks? Any recommendations? So do you listen to audiobooks or are you just a straight physical book guy? I prefer to get a physical book, but lately I've been listening to some audiobooks. So podcasts as well, as well. a lot of podcasts, yeah. um, many different podcasts. Not necessarily ones I know, I just go random, mm -hmm. I see people I like. And I download, uh, so I just hear the thought process. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of audiobooks and podcasts, uh, including Foundation, that are available. You guys can see here. Oh, well, that was not where you could see it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see what came but, up there. But, uh... but there, you can find them uh, over on, uh, on Audible. So those of you, do you wow. use Audible, man? Yeah, so for those of you interested in supporting the show and also checking out Foundation by Isaac Asimov, you can go to audibletrial.com slash magic to get a free audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just got it that all of this yeah, was a build-up. All of this. <laughs> <laughs> this was all a build-up. <laughs> last, last week was absolutely the last best. Last week was uh, amazing. Lindsay asked the question, and Lindsay, thank you again for asking the question. Just try audiobooks for Alex. Segment. <laughs> it was just such a segment when he ended on book recommendations that I just took it away. But Lindsay, from now on, if you are on, I'm going to just leave the I'll question. Just leave it over to Lindsay. Yeah, no, it was, it was so good last week with uh, – with uh tom elderfield and yeah. and Lindsay asked the question and tom started really genuinely answering all of his favorite audiobooks <laughs> and then the audible <laughs> trial thing just starts scrolling in and we're just like oh you know where you can find all these <laughs> you use audible time <laughs> and he was like wait has this been an ad a whole time <laughs> and, and he just awesome. kept uh, making the ad better actually yeah he just kept <laughs> making the ad better That's so it. So yeah, it was uh, a, it was a good ad. I'll give a recommendation for a book this week if anybody wants it. Uh, I may have given this one before because it's a book I've read a couple times, or listened to a couple times, I should say, and that is fanatical prospecting. Uh, oh, nice. If if you want to feel like you don't work hard enough, just read this book. Uh, and the guy does like cold calling and, and sales calls and stuff like that, but it's fanatical. Uh, it's just crazy the amount that he gets done and shows people how to do what he does and, uh, and makes businesses, you know, go crazy and expand. Um, my recommendation this week is, uh, thinking fast and slow by Daniel, uh, Kahneman, uh, very good book. Um, and this was recommended to me by Jay Shetty. So, uh, yeah. Here's a question that came in from the magic guys. Are there any other magic podcasts you enjoy listening to? Nope. None nope. others exist. So nope. Can I be honest? I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. I don't I, I started to like this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun time, right? <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. No other magic podcast. No, that's not true. No. There are some there's other some magic, magic podcasts, podcasts that we listen to. There's uh, uh there's Elliot Terrell's podcast as well. Uh we yeah, talked about which on the we, show. Had, we had Elliot uh, on the we show. Had Elliot on the show. Uh, the most opinionated podcast in the world. Uh, yes, Elliot's. the most opinionated uh, podcast. No, no. Um, uh, there's Deck and Around. We're friends with Deck those Around, guys. Great we, show. Uh, we chat yeah. with them all the time and stuff. Really and, good guys. So, um, yeah, recommend we need to check out Deck and Around. We love magic podcasts. We yeah. we want to support all the other magic podcasts out there. So yeah. I think it's uh, better that we build each other up instead of tear each other down. But let's be honest, this is the only one worth listening to. This is the only one, you know, this is yeah. it. Yeah. Where else are you going to have such seamless ad read transitions? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Lindsay is, says, I'm currently reading Camilla by Joseph de la Fano, Fanu, Fanu, Fanu. That's it. Yeah, uh, it's the first vampire uh, in literature. Carmilla. Huh. Hmm. Predates. That's Dracula. fascinating. That's pretty cool. Wow. Well, there, yeah, guys, I'm reading this one, Isaac Asimov Foundation, by the way. I don't know if it's still a yeah. mad, but I'm going it's out still, with it. <laughs> it can still be an ad. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring it back up. AudibleTrial.com slash magic. <laughs> Check it That's out. Awesome. Get your free That's audiobooks. Cool. It doesn't cost you anything, and it supports the show. No, um, exactly. But, yeah, the, uh, I, this has also been, like, a good push for me to listen to more audiobooks so that I have more recommendations um you know each week so it's been good but yeah we're also on there all access magic you can find it um yeah and you can check out some other 
Magic Podcast. Yeah. So I've actually I've, I've been listening five. also to Oh Hello the Podcast today, uh, which nice. is also on there. So yeah, check it out. I was gonna say, Alan, all of our episodes, previous episodes, should go up at least one listen in the next week. Uh, just I mean, oh sorry, if you're listening to all the other ones. Oh, my con- my connection is okay. Uh, yeah, looks gonna hear me froze. See me well. It looks like you're frozen. Oh, yeah. He's like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> He's... He didn't like our app. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Tigger had a good idea. for it. That was fun yeah. doing the jam. It was. With we Tom. Should, I think we, we should do we more should of those. Do that one night is just bring in different guys to uh, to do jams with. To do jams. Yeah, to do a live jam. That would be mm-hmm. really fun. But yeah, liquid latex for the puzzle thing. That's actually a good idea for, yeah. for Tom's. If you guys are curious about what that is. And check out the episode from last week with Tom Elderfield, uh, where he was talking about an idea that he's had using a puzzle. Um, I shouldn't have kicked Alan out. At least we could have looked at him. Yeah, now he's just completely now He's just black. completely gone. Uh, which is funny because that's what my other camera is doing right now as well. So I don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. This is my other camera right now. Uh, it's just backstage. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, what? He's loading. text. He's loading. He's loading, guys. It's it's all right. Is that right, right? No, they need a better loading wheel like the like the Earth. That's we good. we've got a yeah. We need to. Uh, oh, yeah, we need. Oh yeah. Okay. Can you see me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. It we looks like you're on a hot, you. Looks like you're on a hot spot now. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh no. We didn't even get to purple, man. No. Oh, RB is in the house. Says, what have I missed? Everything. Everything, man. I mean, Blaze did half the podcast by himself so far. Yeah, I did half the podcast by myself. Also, we had a really fun uh, night right while while Alan's loading. We had a really yeah. fun night right before the podcast leading up to it. We started later at 1040, and leading up to that, we did a games night with our, with our patrons. So uh, for those of you who want to jump in on the games night next week, uh, then you can join us at uh, patreon.com slash allaccessmagic. And uh, and have it's going to be a really fun time. We did uh, we did a bunch yeah. of games, and we've been playing Mafia. We've been playing. We're going to be doing Among Us soon. Um, we've been doing some Jackbox games. So it's it's always a ton of laughs, and we just get to a lot of laughs. The yeah, it's a lot of laughs. Um, Kayla trolled us again. It was hilarious. Kayla is the best at trolling. Um, RB says sorry couldn't make the games night. It's, it's all right. We're going to do. One can you next hear me? Week. Can you see me? As well, yeah. Yes, we can. Well, you're frozen again. Yeah. It's very much sad face. The trailer is not working out. <laughs> no, but um, you missed us botching the Audible ad. <laughs> yeah. I like how we're calling him RB. My internet went nuts. IDK says Alan. Um, um, well, I'll uh, say this. Exciting news, guys. Uh, oh, I can't. You can't see it with this camera. Cannot see it with this camera. So let me get it. Let me just get it. Let me do this. Oh, you can. If I back up to here. It is week 20 today. Week 20. 20, Episode 20. Only episode 20, but week 20, which means my wife is halfway through pregnancy. That's insane, man. That's so crazy. Congratulations. Four and a half months, I will have a baby here uh and tomorrow we're going for an ultrasound uh just another standard checkup ultrasound where they make sure that the baby has everything not only like fingers and hands or fingers and toes we already know that they have uh, it has all that but i guess they check like the brain and everything to see if the brain has all developed and everything else so uh that's pretty crazy and then on saturday we're doing another ultrasound to find out the gender um, but I won't know for two weeks, uh, cause we're going to f- find that out ourselves on mother's day. So wow, crazy. Dude. Wow. Wow. That is so crazy, dude. Okay. That's, it looks like it's exciting. It looks and like it and we're back. He's I'm back. I'm here. Back. He's smooth. It's all good. Silky smooth. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Fingy. Fingy. Fingy magic, magic, dude. Um, Wow, hey, yeah. this is crazy. Sorry, uh, we were talking about my wife being pregnant. Tigger T says, in an <laughs> ultrasound, my mom found out I was missing a kidney. 
Well, that is that's, crazy. Oh, that was real bad. Uh, that's yeah. crazy. Nope, that does not happen. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't saying that's real bad about the comment. I'm <laughs> saying real bad about how I turned and my fingy flashed so bad. <laughs> Dude, fingy magic. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just go, D. That's yeah. crazy. Wow. Yeah, that is crazy. That's crazy. But it, it is pretty cool that they can do that now. Like, and just see everything. Yeah, that one kidney working overtime so that you can enjoy all access magic, so you can be here with us, Tigger. We should make yeah. a special T-shirt just for that. Let's yeah. talk about life, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Yes, let's talk about life. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, life, you talked about your cherished memory back in Moscow with your mother, and uh, now you're currently in Brazil, and you have escaped yeah. uh, some craziness going on over there. So absolutely. What was that like coming back from Blackpool and finding out the news of that the country you were heading to was going to war? It's it starts like a you know, it's kinda of like a film in a way. <laughs> like like um, you know, like like a film really. We're going back from Blackpool, it's like Blackpool is like the end of the world, terrible weather, trains being cancelled, we can't get back, we, we're gonna lose our flight, we're all like in a hurry. We get to London actually, in a, by some Magnificent powers. We get to London. We get safe. Now we go to the airport and we're reading this news. Like all like we're reading, hey, Ukraine, Russia, what's going to happen? Like, you know. And then we ask ourselves, hey, you think if we land there, is it going to begin? Is the war going to begin? The fact is we land and on the next day, the war begins. And we're like, fuck, this is, this is so sad, really. I mean, no one really wants this, and it really is sad. Like, you can't say, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, what, what else can I say? It is really um, yeah, man. It's a messed intense. Up uh, I wouldn't imagine that in my lifetime I would live something like this in a world that in theory is more developed than 100 years ago. But hopes to get better, hopes that things pass by and and fix themselves in a way yeah 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 what were the general vibes towards putin prior to the war beginning like how did oh, people was, feel about him as a president you over there? you know <laughs> when you have someone for so long as a president that you don't really necessarily vote for and he just <laughs> stays there for a long time you kind of end up all right as long as he doesn't fuck up you know but even though in many ways like you know you want you want people to change right you want to change people actually in the government mm -hmm. and the vibe was in there because you're we, we come from a soviet uh setup right it's, it's not long ago that we had the soviet union and the generation um you know that lived through that period is like all right as long as you don't say much you're gonna be fine right not because they, they're pro the the person in power but because they're they're scared because it's Soviet, uh, you know, kind of trauma, and my generation, maybe our generation, isn't that like shy to speak up their voice. So you, you did you do have people that are like totally against mm. uh, Putin and all of that. Like we don't want that, you know. Like we, it's, it's time to change, really. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and I think any in any place of power, if you sit there for too long, I think you're gonna go crazy. I don't, know, I don't think mm. you can trust anyone on that. So that's kind of the vibe. It wasn't really pro him, necessarily against him. More of like, all right, there he is. Until now. Now, like, people really are, all right, but you can't go to protests, 15 years in jail. Wow. wow. Many, many things to speaking out your voice. So you can't uh, publish anything on Instagram. Actually, by using Instagram in Russia, if you use Instagram, uh in theory you're giving money to an ex uh, an extremist organization that's what they think is instagram is an extremist so, organization yeah facebook. because yeah yeah because instagram and facebook were taking some actions on mm. on on liber uh, on letting people talk basically right and sharing things and youtube as well so no so there is no more um, monetizing on youtube on instagram or twitch so people mm. that used to work with streaming completely lost their, their jobs. And 
that is sad indeed and not only i mean not not only in russia even more even sadder what's going on in ukraine of course but yeah i i, I never expected to live in this sort of dystopia right you have COVID, then you have the war then you have <laughs> yeah. well now that yeah. you are out of there and can speak openly and we're after hours i mean what do you really think <laughs> no what i really think it really is what, no what, what i really think i mean i mean it's fucked up really <laughs> there we go there we go that's what i wanted to hear yeah, but, 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 but that it is like i mean, I, there, there, I mean not, not even i'm not even going around the thing like fuck that really it's i don't know anyone anyone in my circle that likes what's going on I mean, yeah. I know people, I, I know a few people that are really like trying to kind of make their opinion a secret thing, mm. but you can really tell they're not pro war or pro whatever. So, yeah. in general, you can kind of tell that no one really supports what's going on because, you know, all the brands leaving, all the, um, you know, all the things that used to make part of the normal life all of a sudden disappear mm. and there is no way people are just gonna say nah but that's in, on a bigger like it's part of a bigger plan no one really supports the kind of thinking really there i mean there are of course there is people that support like any sort of political uh mm. figure and you know you can put a stadium filled up but that's not that's not necessarily what the entire country thinks and i think people should judge i mean they should judge the government fuck the government but mm. russian people are are good i mean people are good everywhere you find good and bad everywhere yeah. so i mean it totally makes sense people kind of hating on russians now like for but i think it sh you should kind of separate the government from the people especially yeah, the government it's definitely not the russian people as a whole yeah i don't know he alan did say earlier that he was doing uh what you might call it sign language or interpreting for putin at some point so <laughs> yeah i think at this point he did say it was the game. worst job he ever had we're gonna kick him off again yeah <laughs> okay just, uh, no, <laughs> right, just gonna... no uh, but so, so yeah so it's gonna tell you i had this gig at a russian bank a friend of mine that is a magician and and he wanted someone that spoke Spanish and English uh, well, because in Russia, in Russia, we can talk like this. They wanted someone to talk a little bit less like this. So, um, <laughs> so I got this gig at a bank, it's Bear Bank, and it's like the biggest bank in Russia. And they had this uh, artificial intelligence event and there were like people from uh, all parts of the world that was, were gonna lecture at that event. And on the last day, there was Putin. I didn't get to see him or meet him, like handshake, but he was in the event. Um, I mean, from very far away with a mic stand. Anyway, I'm not gonna go on with, <laughs> I'm gonna get a target on my back when I get yeah. to Russia. <laughs> but, but, but ladies and gentlemen, you are now watching the last yeah. episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but really it is strange because even though I lived most of my life in Brazil uh, and abroad, not in Russia, by being there for a year, I kind of understand the fear of mm. not really talking because you don't you don't know what's going to happen may, maybe to your family. I mean, I'm not saying that the government necessarily is going to do something like that because I think there are many layers to every organization, including a corrupt government. But on that case, um, it's kind of strange to feel the vibe of that. If you say something, something may happen. You know, mm. it, it may be paranoia. That, that's, that's Soviet paranoia. And I'm sorry to feeling it to feel it now lately mm. and wow. not of course in the same level but you, you you start thinking what if you know yeah mm -hmm. so yeah wow that's great that you were able to get out <laughs> and that you had a <laughs> that you have family that's outside of there as well do you still have a lot of family that's over there in russia that's that's uh um yeah my, my my mother is in russia currently is in mm. moscow and i have some family members there my family in russia is not that big but of course there are relatives and and lots of friends great friends great people visual artists in russia they're they're mm. great i mean completely talented young and unfortunately they don't have a brazilian passport and they can't leave russia 
Mm. So, uh, and to work as a Russian outside, it's, it's, it's completely complicated for, for all of this going on. But yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a new generation that's kind <clears throat> of, you know, go, I was going bright, it was really good. But then all of a sudden with all of this, they had to leave the country and all of the talent just goes to other places and all of that so yeah we can kind wow. of switch the subject if you want like i mean maybe it's <laughs> getting a bit too depressing i mean i have no problem talking about it oh well we have different. we have a perfect way when yeah. we get to depressing moment yeah i mean uh, this is good though it's good to hear like from someone that that lives in russia or someone because we've talked about it on the podcast before mm. a little bit not not in depth but yeah. you know obviously everybody sees what's going on and stuff uh, but it's good to hear because we hear things over here. Like I'm in Canada, I know Blaze in the States. And so we'll hear things like, you know, oh, Russian TV doesn't tell people in Russia what's actually happening in the war. Uh, and mm -hmm. stuff but that's like true. that, right? <laughs> yeah, and that so, but it's true. good to hear from someone that that was actually there to go, oh, yeah, this is true. Or this is this is what's happening and stuff. So it's, it's great. I know it's not yeah. magic related, but there is a lot of magicians that are there. Uh, you know that we that we do know and stuff and so it's it's good to hear about that stuff to see what you know like like you said for entertainers over there that can't get out of the country and basically mm. their jobs is stopped right uh, and I mean we have felt that pain through COVID right, the last couple of years where things locked down but I, I'm sure it's a thousand times harder when you know most countries around the world probably don't like as soon as you probably say I'm Russian it's like oh sorry Right, because there's it's no strange. stereotype mm. uh, around around people. So, yeah, wow, yeah, it it is really strange, and I have hopes. We all have hopes that it all gets better, but the thing it is unexpected, really. You know, one mm -hmm. day everything is going so well, uh, work everywhere in Russia. People are not only, I mean. Everything was flowing, and all of a sudden, this this goes from one week of financial collapse, economic mm. collapse, and it's so quick, so sudden, you know. Wow. So, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a funny. Yeah, it's, it's a funny, tragic experience of seeing this kind of thing. I'm not saying I'm not saying funny in terms of what's going on. I mean funny and like I don't know. I have a bit of a like as I'm very very sad. I'm like finding the part of how quick things can collapse, you know, yeah. like in a tragic way, like all of, from day to night, it can just shift. And I think that's the, um, that's something to work with actually. I mean, like it's, it's our job as magicians and artists in general to, to take our work and make it more about what we're living now. How can we talk about what we're living now through magic? Mm. How how do you do that? That's a challenge. That's a real challenge. Mm. And to make the sensation I'm feeling now, and my friends are feeling now, or and people all over the world, and Ukraine as well. How can we make that through through expression? And not only through that, I mean, but I have this bit of a twisted thinking sometimes. That I mean, how can I take this something that I'm feeling now and make it a little bit comprehensible? Mm. Maybe through something I share, maybe through something I perform, but not necessarily, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I just went on. No, no. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what art, uh, like what art looks like coming out of this, uh, you know, because yeah. obviously it's such an impact on people's lives there and in the surrounding areas as well. Um, Cause obviously it's, it, and, and the thing is it's sort of technically like it's hurting the entire planet because like we may not see, you know, things getting blown up and stuff over here, like uh, like over there. But, you know, for us, like just the cost of living and stuff, because as we as what I think what people don't understand is like as the countries put sanctions and stuff on, it massively hurts businesses over here, too. Because mm. like if, if yeah. Russia, if I'm a, if I own a massive steel business and Russia is one of my major, uh, you know, uh, people that buy from me and then all of a sudden my company is told you can no longer sell to Russia but you're not going to replace the government is not giving me that money 
to continue running my business, right? And so businesses are shutting down still, gas prices are going up like crazy uh, and stuff, right? Um, so I think that we we all see the effects of it, but it, I think you're right, it'll be interesting to see the artistic approach people take uh, from what's going on and, and how that's perceived and shown to the world afterwards, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm really curious because I, have really good, great Ukrainian friends, talented mm. as hell, and really nice. I mean, everyone like I, like it's like you. I don't know why you know like why yeah. do this kind of stuff and uh, you feel kind of powerless, yeah. you know, because you, you see how you like you really you can't do anything. You you can try to protest on you and they put you in jail and and that kind of emotion. What's gonna lead it? What, what's it gonna lead to? You know? Yeah. Mm. Now, yeah, when you yeah. say, I mean, that to me is crazy, like 15 years in jail for for protesting. If it's something that everybody in the country comes together to protest, I mean, obviously they can't throw everybody in jail, right? But because when yeah. it first started, we saw on TV, there was some protests and stuff, right? But uh, yeah, has that all kind of stopped over there now? The thing is this, there is a lot of policemen, a lot. Of, so you go to a square, to protest and i'm not kidding i went to my mother to see a concert and i'm going on the square going to the place and on that square all around us there's like a thousand like officers with shields and and like buses to throw people to jail and with sticks guns and and you're seeing all of that and you're like oh this is like you know like some Darth Vader kind of shit, you know, <laughs> like yeah. some Star Wars mm, level wow. empire. Crazy. Everyone's around, and you're like, I wouldn't imagine to feel like that. And just by taking my phone out, maybe they will think I'm taking pictures of them. That's scary, you know. Like you know, you, it's you, people that wow. like, or what was supposed to protect you actually scares and frightens you. And yeah. that is yeah, that is a, that is a strange feeling to see around you. And yeah. That's and they're also why why the reason why I think not everyone goes to protest is because people are really scared and this generational trauma from the Soviet Union really like people do have their voices, their opinion. They can talk honestly, they're very honest on this. And they're kind of frightened to go because they see mm. the amount of of things and, and wow. really have so yeah, I mean unless it goes to the brink of collapse, you know. Yeah, like, if, like to the point that people really are going crazy. Then yeah, but I'm yeah. It's it's a, it's an experiment. It's a social experiment in so many ways as well to be there in this wow. kind of thing. Yeah, of to course, be like, oh, there's are, like more cops than people here. So it's like, <laughs> if everybody did protest, they could all be arrested, which is like so crazy to think. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's of course, and and it's sad for Ukraine for all of that. You see, like all of the the places that are just being bombed for no reason, and that 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 makes you question why, what, what, like, and and that that yeah. really that is the hardest part. You, you can't explain, yeah. and the only thing you can explain is the uh, fragility of the human mind, really, right? Because you you see what people can do, right? They yeah. can be really kind, they can be really good, and they can be really bad. And that gray area is kind of scary to be in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> on a on a more upsided note, uh, Lindsay says, Blaze, will you wear something more interesting next time, <laughs> please? <laughs> uh, um, Grant said that I should lead the way, uh, so I'm going to start the protests. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring it on canadian right, i'm gonna bring a yeah. hockey stick uh and <laughs> just bring a hockey stick and <laughs> just <laughs> all i need it's like you're playing nazi zombies dude will, you're just yeah. in the cops away there will be some crazy crazy video game about me one day just yeah. saying <laughs> yeah just saying <laughs> yeah the guy the hockey stick yeah the, like, the, ga the, the game the game lasts about 45 seconds it's no, so no. maniac runs into a crowd with a <laughs> hockey stick and gets shot no that's no. the whole game <laughs> no, this is unlike captain america thank you very much uh captain canada 
uh, Captain Canuck. Uh... <laughs> Did you see Renato's comment? At the end of it all, Darren it. Brown's going to come out and reveal it was all for his new special where he tries to manipulate political leaders to start wars. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really funny. Yeah, that's, it was, it, it's the push 2.0. <laughs> yeah. We could get people to push somebody off of a building. Could we get them to start a new war? That's oh it. my god! Oh. And, and, but, no, no, uh, and all of a sudden on, on CNN or BBC, Darren Brown just goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, all of this scenario that was just happening in the world was all planned and constructed by me from the very beginning. It's an experiment from the push, but on another level. I don't know how to make the Darren Brown. Anyway, it, it's it pretty sucks. good. But anyway, that's pretty good. Yeah, I can do better next time. I'll try better. I'll try better." <laughs> Tigger T says, uh, Blaze, like, would you wear the Magic Castle blazer? <laughs> Dude, I would throw it on right now. Oh, bro. Put it on I'd for rock, I'd rock that. Itch, when the bro. question comes up, Blaze, I think you should put the blazer on. Just All right. Saying. Just saying. All right. And we're going to uh, put on the Magic Castle blazer? All right. Yeah. Dude, and I'm wearing black underneath, which was the big no no, oh, which yeah. was don't wear black underneath <laughs> this blazer or you will look like a vampire. <laughs> in 1990s, Wayne <laughs> Johnson. He stopped us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I did dress like 1990s dude, Dwayne Johnson. Like imagine, do Blaze. Sorry, but if you get bold, you really look like Dwayne Johnson. 100%. I mean, I think that the hair isn't the only difference between yeah, me and Dwayne yeah. Johnson. Let me put the finger on your hair and let me take a picture. maybe like another hundred pounds. A uh, hundred pounds. I need to get a bit more tan, and yeah. it'll be yeah. Yeah, I'll make. A, I'll He's make probably a, close to a hundred pounds heavier. He's gonna meme me. That's up. the crazy thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Let me like, see. Uh, I would say a good eighty pounds heavier, and that's like one hundred percent muscle. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, Dwayne, it, well, I'm a hundred percent muscle too. Okay, he's yeah. two sixty. Yeah, so that's he's, said. he's he's almost a hundred pounds. Almost a hundred pounds. He's like ninety pounds, um, maybe eighty five pounds heavier than me. That's uh, that's ridiculous, yeah. dude. That's like blaze. His leg is thing. like you, dude. But the but the rocks got bad abs. <laughs> <laughs> you seen his abs? Dude, he's got no abs, know. dude. I don't know. He's pretty jacked. Maybe when he was wrestling, he didn't have abs. No, he just doesn't have abs, dude. He I got know. messed up. He's got messed up abs. Nah. Let's let's go to uh, if you he if you Google Dwayne Johnson abs, it says Dwayne Johnson explains why he doesn't have a six pack. Because <laughs> he eats too much to put on all that muscle. <laughs> exactly. The muscles um, are everywhere else. Yeah, which. Uh, desktop I am sharing here. Oh, this here one. we go. See, we got <laughs> we got Twain to Throck Tronson, bro. Here, look at this. See, we've got goalie priest magician against Russia. Against <laughs> goalie priest magician against Russia. <laughs> look, he's got some decent abs in that photo. Dude, he's, he's got terrible. it's not as it's okay. Not terrible. It's, not, it's not terrible. And that's like he's peak like, that's peak Dwayne Johnson abs. Yeah, yeah. He's not like fat though, like midsection fat. He just says like out his everybody's abs are different. That's the thing. That's that's when he's wrestling. I can't that's believe he's chubbier yeah. there. Yeah, okay. You okay. gotta fall down on the map pretty hard. You do but, gotta fall uh, down. Uh, and then uh, Tigger T says, "Where's Says? He can make it happen." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lindsay said, "The Rock's lunch <laughs> has more calories than Blaze." Amazing. <laughs> true, guys. Guys, we're chilling. It's all right. Now, uh, oh, speaking, of, speaking of calories. Speaking about calories. No, no, please. please speaking, don't. speaking of calories, shall we, shall we hit them with purple? I think it's time. You think it's time? Are you ready, Alan? He's not ready. Always ready. Are you I'm ready for the ready. most... If you were to guess what the most important what? question that's is of good, the night, that's a what good would, question. yeah, what, what would you, you what do you think it is the most important question of the night? The one you're about to ask me right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. A good, that's a good thought. But what do you think? Because I have no idea what you're gonna ask me, and that's why it's gonna I be mean, the best question you're gonna ask. It's, me. I would say it's the question of our generation. Yeah, definitely the question of our generation. So, what what do you think that could be? I have no no idea. Cause there's so many things you could ask. I have no idea. Well, if you were to guess, just one. Yeah. What would be the most important yeah. question of the night? <laughs> I think I got it. All right, all right, all right. Okay. What book 
should I read? <laughs> oh, no, that was a good question. That was a good question, but we do not have a book sponsor, only audiobooks that yeah. you can find All right, so, at so, uh, audibletrial.com slash magic. Scroll right there. No, but the uh, the most important question of the evening. Of the evening. Is. Yeah. What's life all about? Ooh, even no more important than that. Way more important than that. It's not even close no to the same level. I have no idea, Jen. Are you ready for uh. lasagna? Lasagna! What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Meat. Lasagna. Veggie. Lasagna. Plain. Lasagna. Saucy lasagna! What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Keller! Lasagna! Cheese! Lasagna! Bolognese! Lasagna! Lasagna! Blame! Houdini! What's yours? Okay, so What's we've got the bad blazer on. Oh, we got the big lapels, bro. That is a big lapel. It's a big lapel, right? Wow, that's dude. I I got big. more. I got way more fabric than you. That takes up your whole. Did chair. you never seen this much fabric, bro? No, look like when you put it in, you're so skinny that the it just looks like lapels, bro. It's just straight lapel. It's just like lapels just, down here. It's just straight up lapel. Now, uh, early again. No, we didn't. That was the whole. No, that was the whole ass song. That was the whole song. That was the whole uh, song. I like so, this. Alan, the most important question of the night. Sorry, I love this. This is just Bolognese. 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 He was listening. Best Go one. Play. Classic. I, I love that Tigger T says that uh, she didn't notice that it <laughs> that the background was purple the whole time. <laughs> She's been watching the show for like 50 weeks. Uh, and never noticed that it was purple until we said it last week. Yeah. Bolognese. Uh, Tigger said, my Bologna. mom just gave me the strangest look. I'm not wearing headphones, and she has <laughs> never heard the song before. She was wondering if you're about to eat lasagna now. Tigger, let us I'm know if your mom would like now. to hear the song again, because it is yeah. the best song in all of existence. If you want us to play it one more time, we can do that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to take this off. Uh, oh, no. You got to do the rest of the podcast. Do the re no, dude. I'm going to be so hot. No. <laughs> this is going to be bad. Come on, man. Uh, so, Alan, we have a follow-up question to that. And that question is the second most important question, but potentially mm. the, the first. Potentially the first. So, Alan, if you baked one bolognese, beautiful lasagna, and then you baked a second identical bolognese, beautiful lasagna, and then blaze. And then you were to take said second bolognese lasagna and stack it atop the first how many lasagna do you have now one or two no you have one very tasty lasagna one very tasty one, lasagna. No, no 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 you have one very big big tasty lasagna hmm well, I that think sounds, that confirms, that, confirms, confirms our thought. that definitely confirms our thought. Um, and as a reminder to everyone, in case you forgot that this this is how the lasagna mathematics works. Our friend Alan Simonov has confirmed the lasagna mathematics hoodie, which you can get at allaccessmagic.com slash shop. Go straight over to the lasagna mathematics hoodie one plus one Finally, equals one one i even said one big lasagna so it is bigger it is mm -hmm. bigger um we've got some other lasagna merch on there though too right yes we do have some other lasagna merch show on them there. the other yeah merch. let's give them a let's give them a little a little <laughs> taste a little taste no, of the flavor not the so, only one yeah uh, so if you go over to uh allaccessmagic.com slash shop. You can scroll down, peruse some magic products and things, some of which are still in stock, some of which are out of stock. And then you can go over to some of the uh, the merch items. Here we have the All Access Magic hoodie. 
We have another All Access Magic t-shirt. You know, we'll make it big so everybody can see. We've got a What's Your Favorite Genre of Lasagna t-shirt. It's a favorite. Yeah. I want one. I need one of these. You want a What's Your Favorite Genre of Lasagna t-shirt? We've yeah. got the What's Your Favorite Genre of Lasagna hoodie as well. I and, of course, the Lasagna Mathematics. You know, it, it's a whole brand, man. It's a whole brand. We got the All Access Magic. You know, it's a thing. So uh, check out the site. And uh, and you, too, can be a proud owner. Also, I look ridiculous. If you guys could see what it looks like underneath, because your boy's wearing gray sweatpants. Oh, that is a great <laughs> outfit. This is a well, great look, really man. On. No, no, and that's funny. No, and the funny part is you're wearing gray sweatpants. I'm wearing black ones so ah, basically dude, so we should swap balance. sweatpants Crazy. i thought exactly. i thought i thought you were gonna just be like you're wearing gray sweatpants and i'm wearing no pants johnny says i'll make it uh it big so everyone can see it mm -hmm. johnny is eating lasagna i think i've got some lasagna in the freezer i think next week i'm gonna make some lasagna for the episode I want one now. Now, now I'm, I've got I'm very hungry right now. I, I want a lasagna. I'm going to order a lasagna right now, actually. You should. <laughs> Where are you going to find lasagna at this hour? Dude, I am going to What time is it? find uh, the place. What time is it in Brazil right now? It's 1 a.m. and 27 minutes. Okay, so you're only an hour ahead of us. Okay, only no, an hour ahead. Okay. All right. But yeah. So let's talk about life. Uh, how's life going over there? Hey. Life is good. Uh, it's well, definitely really? a lot less hectic than than I'm sure your life was <laughs> this past month. Um, yeah, man, doing the magics. Anybody interested in seeing me perform? Uh, I'll be at Speakeasy Magic this weekend, uh, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. Nice. So yeah, you can see me in New York City all if you happen days. to be around. Nice. All three Filling days. That. Yeah. Filling it. Um, yeah. Uh, I I take it you are not leaving Brazil. You're not going to Magic Life. Uh, otherwise, I'd say we would give you a Lasagna's T-shirt at Magic Life. When is it going to be? May? Uh, May fifteenth. Maybe. 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 Yeah. Very smart. You're very smart, please. Very smart. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> we can talk the entire life like this. What do you think? Yes, I think very talk. good. Um, <laughs> I think it's a very interesting experience. I think I we might mental. get. I think we might get canceled, uh, yeah. or at least I would. <laughs> this could be. This is Slo maybe a sort of Slovenian accent. We don't know. It can be Russian. It can be. It can be any very, kind of accent. Very, very good. Don't know. Hang on one second. RB brought up a comment that just changed the game as well. Says I'm gonna buy two lasagnas and put the first one on top of the second one and see if they only charge me for one. Charge me one. Oh, <laughs> that's too. Yeah, I don't know if restaurants are as up on their lasagna no. game as we are. RB just changed it. Oh, that's, that's true. That, that's that's the good. best comment so far. That, that's that, a really good. No, one. no, 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 no. Wow. No, no, Renato's was better with well, the Darren Brown. Oh, the Darren Brown thing was really good. The push yeah. 2.0, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one is on the same level. Yeah, top two. Now, two. I I was sent a video today oh. that is the Great Lasagna Paradox. Did you see this? I did not, but... Tigger, I don't know if I can stream it. Tigger asked if um, does Hitting Tom apply to Magic Live or is it a lifetime offer? I think that's a lifetime offer. I think that's a lifetime offer, but you should yeah. go to Magic Live. Yeah. Um, and join our lasagna eating contest. Enjoy we'll be having it at Magic Live. Audiobooks. I'm so happy we got to have our, our great segment. Now, this video is ripping off our brand, bro. It's got 1.8 million views on the Mythical Kitchen page. And I think that it's it's 50 seconds. I feel like if I watch this, I might get copyright striked. Um, but we'll just skip through. Yeah. Let's skip through. So here we are. This man's. I don't like this guy already. Mm, yeah, I don't like <laughs> Already don't like this guy. He says. If you stack one lasagna on top of another lasagna, is that still only one lasagna? There's no minimum requirement for the number of layers in a lasagna, but the intuitive amount seems to be three in common. I hate this dude already. He's literally, he just posted this video. Ladies and gentlemen, 
uh, watching this, let's spam his account with terrible comments uh, that he this is a ripped off bit. Now, I don't know if we can overwhelm his 1.8 million views, but we oh, can try. We can. We, we are can. a vocal minority, and he is a crook, Fiddlin' Johnny. Conversely, there's no maximum amount of layers because 100 layer lasagna still qualifies as lasagna. So if you took roughly 33 minimally layered lasagnas out of the oven and stacked them on top of themselves, that would still constitute a single lasagna. However, we need to discuss the inherent singularization of the English language version of a lasagna. Bro, what I hate a him. I hate him. I don't like this guy. Uh, I don't like him either. And Fiddle and Johnny says, I think he needs to buy a lasagna hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, he needs to buy a lasagna hoodie. We do need to copyright strike him, RB. That's a good and lasagna versus the Italian lasagna. He's like an Italian. The E at the end of the word signifies. But okay, I kind of like him that he at least brings up the difference between lasagna and lasagna. Lasagna, because in Italian, the E at the end of the word signifies pluralization, meaning the term a lasagna is fully decontextualized in the Italian language and thus the dish's birthplace. In Italian, you simply do not have a lasagna. I hate him again. This guy's lasagna looks terrible too. Lasagna is a plural oh, mass gross. noun referring to the noodles themselves, signifying that some lasagna exists, rendering the count noun formation in English absolutely useless. That said, does the dish's national origin make it beholden to the grammatical confines of the state, to which all I can say- This looks gross, bro. Guys, all I'm saying is I cook a way better lasagna than that guy, so uh, that's all this we need to say. Loud in the kitchen. say is, we did a sin today. Lasagna is good, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like Phil and Johnny says he needs to try to talk a little faster uh, <laughs> or are we getting a grammar lesson too I hate he <laughs> I hate he, <laughs> I hate he. Uh, what a waste yeah that guy has a punchable voice yeah I I love I encourage bullying when it comes to cyber bullying <laughs> <laughs> Lasagna ripoffs. Yeah. That's yeah. the moment where you get canceled, Blaze. If you rip off the lasagna question, I will hunt you down. I will find you. With my hockey stick. Wow. That's it. That's all I got to say. That's the Canadian way. You think they're all nice and polite, but you, you take their lasagna and they're... And we snap. And you snap. I, I've been nice for 36 years. <laughs> You touch my lasagna, I kill. I kill. I kill. Just saying. Yeah. Um, I really hope that guy's at Magic Live. I really hope he's at Magic Live. Unlikely, but I, I really, really hope I'm going to be in Magic Live. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start a street fight at Magic Live. Oh, we'll stroll up into Magic Live with our lasagna merch, Alan. It's going to be great. You know, we'll make sure you got a hoodie. We'll be the squad. It'll be perfect. Yeah, lasagna squad. That's it. Lasagna squad. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Now back no, no, no. to last squad. You know why? Oh, anyway, it's terrible. Go on. Oh, this is a dad. Never joke. mind. Alan King. That was a terrible yeah. joke. That, that was that was my worst joke tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, go on, please. Forgive me for my okay. incompetence. On. No, it's okay. We'll we'll, we'll eventually forgive you. It's all right. Um, all right. You should make people lasagna with this guy. Agreed, Mark. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Ryan, you just nailed your Liam Neeson impression. Yeah. Yeah. It was just instead of I will find you, I will kill you with my hockey stick. You know, that's exactly what Liam Neeson said. Find you. <laughs> and I with a hockey stick. So, Alan, what is your t favorite type of magic to watch? Not necessarily to perform. Is it, uh, is it still visual? <clears throat> I like to see different visual stuff, like mm -hmm. things that I wouldn't expect. That's what I love in visual magic. And there is a moment now that I'm kind of noticing that visual acts are getting a bit boring because mm -hmm. that the style has, the path has been set. And um, so it kind of got boring. I like to be, I don't know, fooled with card magic. Not only fooled, but really like see random things in close-up work. I love that. I love close-up magic. I love just sitting and experiencing close-up with no concept, just pure like interactive stuff. Like if I 
and not really on video. Like I want to experience that being there. So to me, it's really fun to to experience that side of magic too, because um, it's a completely different language and communication towards uh, the audience. And yeah, close up. Close up. Wow. I wouldn't have pegged you for a close up guy, but that's cool. Here's something great is move monkey said super excited to join the lasagna squad at my first ever magic live this year yes awesome. uh, yes. we will see you there but and let me ask you this because you said something there that resonated with me and i, I love manipulation I, I have a respect for it because i think it's incredibly difficult uh you know i learned some card manipulation when i was a lot younger and, and thought this is what i want to do like in part of like one act in my show at card manipulation stuff. Um, but then as I watched people do manipulation, every act, there was a couple acts. I went to a cam convention and I'm, I'm going to say there was two guys that, that looked almost the same, uh, like very, very similar look. And then their acts, everything was okay. I'm going to turn the cards into a scarf and then the scarf into the ball and and i was like why are we booking two manipulators right because every act uh, that i saw for a number of years kind of just seemed to go down that path i know you touched on it a little bit that everything seemed to be the same um do you do you know why that is like do you have a, a thought process on like you know, obviously there's a lot of background teaching and stuff like that, but it seems like everything that comes out, everything that's new is some type of ball manipulation or silk or, or card. And no one really yeah. agrees from that too much. I totally agree with you. That's part of the reason why I'm bored with, with magic in general, in stage magic lately, because you kind of ex know what to expect already from certain people and that's exactly what happened they're like oh, all right cool yeah i mean there is insane amount of acts with crazy skill with ball manipulation that i love seeing oh that's crazy cool but the format is still the same right in the end it's one ball turning into four even though it's beautiful you can find other people doing the same thing that's part of the reason why i'm doing this approach on manipulation um because i i don't have fun doing it just oh hey it's gonna appear hey it's gonna appear mm. and i think there it's a little bit on the term of influence so a lot of magicians when they start learning magic they get influenced on the material they see so you see people in close-up doing the same text as people they see in dvds same way in manipulation they do exactly the same thing as their out idols will do on their lectures or on their acts. And basically they are just slight rip offs, not necessarily because they're trying to copy someone or rip someone off, but because the format is there and they're playing inside the box on that format. So they're given the tools and not much of, of expression in there, right? And that's the problem with manipulation. And it's slow, actually, to be honest, Koreans, um, even though repetitive lately, um they kind of started this thing in a way mm. because they started playing with with drama even though not necessarily well done in some korean cases or but it was kind of like the starting point to experiment more and now you see more people on stage with a, a stylistic language of like a, a different aesthetic on not only magic and with a style in mind and all of that and that's actually do be, be, because that existed now you have this more mm. um non-traditional non-linear form of magic right so you have this box which is like square and say all right here i have a pack of cards pick a card da, 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 and the effect the the fact that in the end something amazing happens becomes predictable because it doesn't matter it doesn't it, they may not know what they're going to expect but in the end they're amazed still that's an emotion that you can predict if even though you're a great magician in the end you're gonna you know that you're gonna be amazing whoa that's crazy but you still want something more right 
And that's the thing with magic to me that that I like a lot, that some acts I can just watch. They may not have much methods that are fooling or visual moments that make me go crazy. But it all just goes so well together and it looks so beautiful that you're like, I prefer this that I can just watch and have fun and enjoy watching this or feel this emotion that the artist is trying to do and see a guy trying to produce a thousand cards open hand and no matter what, even though that's cool, I, I, I'm a geek on this kind of methods, but uh, still it's like, is, is, that, is that the best uh, path you can go? Just the, the crazy effect and that's it. I think you want a crazy effect and a, an aesthetic combined, right? So that way it's like, fuck, you, you actually remember that forever. And when you remember that effect, you'll have to remember the entire act. That is the mission I'm trying, or the, the sensation you have when you saw the entire act. And that is the only thing I can give to the audience through magic or through whatever I do on stage is the idea of, um, of what they're going to feel afterwards. So you may see a movie, you may say it's terrible, it's, it's great, it's meh, okay. But still, you want people to go with something. And if you try a little bit, I think you can make people leave with not just meh, it's okay, but oh, that was that was interesting, that was different, mm. you know? Maybe not a masterpiece, maybe not a wow, but it, you can make many other acts. And eventually that can turn into a jewel. And, and that, that, that to me is the beauty of magic because you can create cinema on stage really you can do that on stage there there are many possibilities of doing that that go beyond cards and i'm still in this block i feel in this cage of doing card manipulation and paper vanishing all of that and i want to I, I know because if, if this works with cards this has to work with other objects it can't be that the only possible path is mm. coins cards ones balls silks flowers I don't know. And that that's to me why what why the sand guy from Korea, Kim yeah. Jong Min, there's yeah. a sand guy. Beautiful. That guy is a genius, is a misunderstood genius. He destroyed because he's completely different. I, he I was, uses I was, none of it. I was literally about to say that's the only guy I've seen in the last few years. I think there were some guys that had some good acts, you know, with like uh, the one guy did like running shoes and stuff and was changing everything on his running shoes and stuff but it was still very like there was still some a lot of card stuff i think in that act but the sand act like blew it away and i mean i mean it's taken i guess from the salt pour like from years and years and years ago right but it's like that's his interpretation of it taking it to a whole nother level like with the with the ring uh, of sand and stuff, oh, wow. it's, so it's yeah. insane. Um, and that makes me think he has objects that aren't real, and that you don't have yeah. in the normal. Like it's not cards; it's like a wand. It's like a sand wand. It's like a ring, a metallic ring. With, but you believe it, mm -hmm. yeah. even though it's a, it, because the reality is constructed in such a way that you accepted it from the very beginning. Because he's not trying to fool you. He's not trying to, hey, I have one effect. No, he's in his own world. Yeah. And yeah, that's how, that's why I love him so much. And the, there's a funny story about him. Uh, a Korean magician told me that when he competed in, he was competing in local competitions in Asia and Fiz, and on FISM Asia, people didn't wouldn't expect him to win. And he got like the nomination to win, but not like gr the main prize but he was able to go to the world championship and the act was so like um, experimental mm. that, right so it's like unusual um when he went to FISM and performed the first i saw i saw the competition everyone was like wow that was so different that was so different and then when he left the competition stage that korean guy he told him he's actually i'm not gonna say who it is maybe i, I shouldn't be saying this but anyway uh he's like oh you you did well but i think it's not this time that you won but he did well i mean people i mean went, went okay and he goes and he gets first prize on general magic and like 
that's because the Korean mentality wouldn't expect this guy to win because he does yeah. completely different and mm. risky stuff. It's not easy to do what he does. And no, yeah, yeah. I know is he depended a lot on lighting and set because he performed at Magic Live a few years ago, but had some major issues due to lighting and stuff like that. They they weren't getting things right for him, which which sucks because it is a really crazy. So you're really stuff. depending on that. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the people around you to make sure that it looks right. Yeah. So that's that's a problem. Uh, if you're you want to do a stage act or something like that, you have to really trust who you're working with. You have to be best friends with the lighting guy. Yeah. So that he does the blackout in the perfect timing. Because there is a there I had stories in the end when I would have the letter turn into a gun and I had the letter here and I do this, boom, smoke moment, sound effect on the music, the the gunshot. And no fucking blackout. <laughs> I'm, here standing. I'm standing here 30 seconds with a gun. And, <laughs> and I'm like getting angry and I'm doing like a finger gesture, like snapping, saying, fucking do the blackout. Like, like, and then when I had this experience the first two times, I wouldn't know how, really how to react. But now I found a way in case that happens. In case the re we do the rehearsals, he, rem he remembers it. They have the show. He forgets it. All I do is I just go here and I put the gun away and I go to the audience. But still, that is the moment that matters so much yeah. to the cyclic story. Because if I just go from the gun and I go to the audience, then I'm I'm still in character. Yep. I, or or I'm not a character. That that's 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 the thing. So it's really important to be like in some way. Now I'm not gonna say manipulate the <laughs> the lighting guy or lighting person or whatever um because it really depends on that so yeah. treat them nicely be friendly if they're not friendly with you be direct and just have fun i don't know because i, I had some <laughs> some some fights not not like verbal fights physical but i mean struggles i mean like uh, i had struggles not the, fights. i think the best one of the best shows i ever did it's a big audience. It's like 500 people probably at this conference. And uh, I gave the sound guy uh, my USB and stuff. And I'm like, here's all my music for my show. I said, everything is just background music. So no cues. I'm not just, just play it. Everything is good. It's all timed out. So he goes, okay. And like five minutes before the show, he's like, I, yeah, I can't, can't do your music. I'm five like, minutes before the yeah. show i'm like dude i gave this to you like when i first came in yeah i just i can't like he's an older guy first a little bit older it's like can't get this to work i'm like okay yeah and it's a corporate event so i'm like okay i've done lots of shows without any music so it's fine no problem most of my acts are all talking so it's not not a huge deal i said well if you have just instrumental music if you just play light instrumental music in the background, that would be great. Like just, just fill any like dead space, just something quiet. Um, he goes, okay. So they announced me to come on and he puts on sandstorm and just blares it. And I come out cause I have to right? come out and I'm like, okay, he's going to, He's going to kill the music, right? Like when I get out there. Oh, no. This old guy is partying it up now. So he wouldn't turn the music off. So I have to like run into the audience. I'm like getting people. I'm like, da -da 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 -da. it's like, it's like da -da -da -da. It's so bad. But oh it was God. hilarious at the same time because I, I think I made a joke about it. Like Sandstorm. I haven't heard that song in 25 years, uh, you know, or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, it was so bad. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, oh, I, I had one. I had one final reveal for a show that was entirely predicated on the um, the person who was like doing lighting and sound that they would put this image 
up on the projector screen. That was a photo that had been taken before the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so then it's like we have this, all this buildup and all of these free choices made by all these people and everything. And then there's this big reveal that's supposed to be on the screen. And then it's just not there. And we're just waiting. And I'm just like, hey, so there's going to be, you know, we're going to, can we pull it up? <laughs> just like, I'm just sitting there for like five minutes because I guess like something had happened where like, the computer froze and he wasn't able to pull up the image, yeah. you know? And so yeah. I'm just waiting there for this like grand master prediction. I'm just, oh. That's awesome. I like Renato says, did you just pretend like the song was part of your act? Oh yeah. hundred uh, percent. But I said to the, cause, cause the thing is, is a corporate event, right? So I know that most people are probably in their forties to fifties, some sixties. So maybe to them, that song is super cool still. Right. Like they think, yeah, this is getting pumped up. And so I'm trying to pump them. Right <laughs> like, yeah, let's, let's bring it on. Um, but he just wouldn't stop playing. Like he played almost the whole song, I think. Uh, and then immediately after I go to the the guy that booked me, who who I'm friends with, uh, and I go, and his, his son and daughter are there. And they're like my age. And I'm like, guys, Sandstorm, honestly, like the worst. <laughs> like I wouldn't stop it either. But uh, yeah, it uh, it was great. It was great. Last things event. that happen. Yeah. Things that happen. Yeah. I mean, now like I start every one of my shows with with Sandstorm. So <laughs> no matter how <laughs> no matter how deep it is, just to make sure, in case they, I mean, don't try to fuck it up. You already have Sandstorm in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's a good but call back, Lindsay, to the last week. The image will be there in one, two, three. Wait, should we count down? <laughs> should we count down three, two? Or should we go on three or on go? Or on one? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That was uh, from our lesson with Tom Elderfield. Last We're going to get copyright strike, man. That was from our lesson with Tom Elderfield last night or last week, where he was explaining to us how to make a video last three minutes for the yeah. Facebook rhythm. You just play this. <laughs> and just keep it going. <laughs> uh, so good. So good. But uh, so, Alan. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> if, if you were to count. If you were to count, like, the number of shows, that you were um, just doing... Do you do shows? You do do shows, right? Like, full, like, your own full show? Or are you always part of... Um... Mix, so if you sometimes were to... do a solo. Well, yeah. Oh, so sometimes solo, sometimes not. So the number of shows that you did solo compared to the number of shows would you, you did down from the top the number, number, or would you count from one up to the? Do you, know what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are are you wait? Are you trolling me or what? Because I'm, I'm trying to. No, no. Like, the uh, number oh. of shows. Um, in Russia, do you count down? Like you set a goal at the start of the year, like a hundred shows, or <laughs> and you count down to zero to count count zero the or show. You, count, uh, you mean like, or do you count up? And then are solo shows, uh, or 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 group shows, are those a different countdown? If number? you're a part of a show that has other people then do you count that as a fraction of a show or is it multiple shows it all multiple? together oh is it multiple shows so like it would take six off of your number yeah i think six i'm six really great. confused probably six well, yeah i'm really confused all right well, six maybe is the answer i'll just say that because i'm really i'm really lost i mean count counting down that that is <laughs> <laughs> that is the most conceptual question I've heard this night. I mean, if I were to give you an award of a conceptual artist, I mean, you would get the first prize, though, because I, I'm yes. really shocked. I'm, I'm just but really I think, I'm trying yeah. to work on my interview questions, and so that yeah. was 
going to be question three. We were, we were told that we should we, go to interview school. Yeah, that was going to be question three back tonight. Question. But, but then I didn't know last week I got stuck counting one, two, three. And then someone said that I should count one, two, three. But then I realized that I gave do the you, audience. Do you, go, do you start with your thumb and go one, two, three, four, five? Or do you go one, two, three, four, five? Or do you oh. go one, two, oh. and then three what about pinky stuff like <laughs> what about three. starting with one or wait is this one three? is this three wait is this, is this okay four four, four five <laughs> four, <laughs> four, two, three, please four. never go to interview school <laughs> Cool. Uh, so I most one time okay, legitimately one time I was in chem class and uh and I was so bored. <laughs> if you do a show on is that one show or um that's but, a yeah, mega show. This is a mega that's show. Good. But yeah, so one time I was in chem class uh in eleventh grade and I uh I was so bored with the teacher. And so I was just like, how can we just not get to the homework part? How can we just not get to the rest of this lesson? So then I just raised my hand in the middle of whatever the teacher was saying. And then I was like, when you count, because you said that we were doing question four, but like when you count, do you count one, two, three, four with one? Or do you go one, two, three, four, five? Or is five, is this five or is this one? Or do you start this way? And now when you do three, is it one, two, three, or is it one, two, three? And then we got the whole class starting about it, and everyone erupted <laughs> into how they count. And we never got the homework that day. Nice. So, Alan, Blaise back, push. So, Alan, back to my on. question. Do yeah. you guys count up or down? I count up. I count up. But then there's no ceiling oh. to where you could get to. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the wrong question, darling. The question is, uh, what difference? How, how are you going to differentiate if you're counting down or up? Really? How do you know you're going up or down when you're counting? Well, I mean, you, is it because you're subtracting or is it be, or may, you can be counting down, but that's way too much of a. Well, are you using guess? Yeah, I usually like to think that the day starts good and then I subtract. Oh. <laughs> that's deep. That's looking great. The day starts at 100% and then it can only go down. <laughs> Blaze went through the 11th grade in the pandemic, Alan. The second half of the year he had to do virtually. I'm a little, I'm a little guy. Uh, these, guys, these guys needs to do Nerdle. Nerdle. Uh, yeah, man. But, you know, I think we have the best questions. I think so, too. I, I work really hard on the questions throughout the week. like Especially the counting part of it. Yeah, I mean, up or down? Like, yeah. Well, I I prefer to count up, but only like I'll go one, two, three, like you would count for like a kid saying like if you were bad, you'd go, I'm going to give you the count of three. But then, then once I get to three, if they haven't gone in, then I go three again, saying three twice, two, one. And then if they I still haven't time out, no, yeah. But if they haven't gone in or worked to time out yet, then, but then you know, I don't like to hit kids, obviously. So, <laughs> so then you, you give don't them, like. <laughs> That's unless unless I like, um, so then you, uh, <laughs> so then you gotta go like, like three quarters, half, yeah, quarter. One eight. Now, when a kid's in timeout, are they like, are they in like some weird stasis limbo? Like they're out of time, you know, for a little bit. They're in limbo. They're in limbo. Wow. Ooh. So, do they the suicide at the end? <laughs> uh, Grant had a good comment. When you're subtracting, you're still counting up negative one, negative two, negative three. Wow. You are still going up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was a good question, I think. You know, that, that, was, was, a, <laughs> that was a really yeah. good question. Um, yeah. We never finished the 20 questions because you only made it to 15. If you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? The Godfather, why not? 
Ooh, classic. Nice. Um, what's your favorite sports team? Let me remember because I changed my mind constantly. I would say I like Real Madrid a lot. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Um, nice. Madrid, of course. I love that uh, Renato says, I wish I was high watching this. Ah, it is 420. We wish that. It, that's exactly why we're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, this is brilliant. Why are we not lighting it up? You just need <laughs> one, three, or is it three to one or on go or on one? or on? Well, that's, See, that's the hardest thing is if you do like rock, paper, scissors, do you go on scissors or do you go on shoot? Some people say go. Like that is an astronomical thing. Like, do you, you go, say go? You are a heathen. You go rock, sad. paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah. Or rock, paper, scissors, go. Or no, just no, rock, paper, scissors. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, no, see, he, see. Oh, no. That rim, Rochambeau is a kick in the nuts. Rochambeau is a kick in the nuts? Yeah. I think he's rock, wow. wow. No, you are. You have never watched South Park, uh, Rochambeau. Bro, if you Google. Google Rochambeau. Yeah, dude. And you know what pops up when you go Rochambeau? Put, it on, put South Park. No. Is it baby scissors? No. Is it baby scissors? Rochambeau. Um, uh, what, yeah. a, what a great interview, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up. Alan, could you show? Oh, could you do that more in view <laughs> to people? Could you show that? Nice. Oh, I look great. You so, can go. You can go all the way, and you can go all the way, vanish, and get back at the same way. Nice. nice. Wow. That's yeah, we should do it diagonally. You can go slow. You can go back. And you can go back the same way, and that's it. Anyway. That looked great. Bravo. Check out Air by Alan Zimanov. No, you should, it? by the way, remind, no, no. S serious answer. Don't buy Air. Buy, buy a decent magic book by Juan Tamaris and get conceptual. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Fiddle and Johnny. Go cliche. A, Phil and Johnny had yeah. a great question. He says, Do you have a preferred card for those manipulations? Uh, but actually, do buy Air. Uh, all right. So. <laughs> Why am I doing this? I'm not this kind of guy. Okay. Favorite cards. I like bicycle. Um, I mean, I like the tr like the tally ho kind of quality, bicycle kind of quality that isn't like I don't like card mani uh, manipulation cards. I don't like them because they're way too meh. they're flimsy. I don't yeah. I prefer something more set that I can kind of feel that I'm palming actually and I can feel the you know the object in my hand. And so I was yeah. just, I was just like underneath the, the frame trying to be like, how many can I back palm? Right. And one, everything flashes all the time. Uh, if it's like a bunch of cards for me, well, I'm like, also I need to build up the dexterity. How many is like the maximum amount of like bicycle stock cards that you back palm that you back palm on a regular basis? All right. I'm going to say, honestly, I don't, do the back palm so much. I actually don't do it in my exact. I think I only do one move with back palm, really. Mm. But in when I was practicing, I was playing with the idea of taking like I don't know, maybe twenty five cards. And the thing is, I wouldn't produce cards like this because I, I don't know even if you bend them a lot, it's not gonna look good. Yeah. So the thing is, the secret is you start opening a fan. And you start slowly getting rid. So as you start producing fans, you get rid of cards. And then you slowly have more cards to palm. So you, I don't know. I can't produce cards like this. Like that, 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 But it wouldn't be too clean because the card is way too stiff, mm. too rigid. Unless yeah. you prepare them before and you like let them really, really, um, you know, you know. So <laughs> but 
in general, I can palm the entire deck. I like to have more cards and have few cards. If I'm doing a manipulation act that isn't on a like Limbo, for example, that has like a solid sequence, I prefer to have a full pack on my hand and I start improving with the whole deck, like doing classic moves and then combining with new ones and going back to classic and kind of going in this flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, but if, uh, if you're going to produce cards, if I'm like actually going to produce one by one, you could have maybe this amount of cards. I think actually I can put a little bit more. And if they're kind of, if they're older and more or less around 14 cards, 20 cards, you can mm. do. You can yeah. do anyway, yeah. Imagine this is a segue to the all access magic playing cards, which we oh, have been working on. We have been working on, absolutely. We've got uh, a lot of stuff in the works. It's just been a very busy time. I did find uh, Rochambeau. Uh, so, this yeah. is from when I was a kid. Uh, it says, is a game where two participants use hand sim uh, symbols for rock, paper, scissors. So, you were right. But it says, Cartman's twist on the game involves both players kicking each other in the testicles until one falls and the other player standing is deemed the winner. Wow. <laughs> it generally means the first person is guaranteed to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> so that was what the show was. It was like in a whole episode on Rochambeau. And he's like, oh, yeah, you just kick each other in the nuts. I go first. Or he goes, let's play Rochambeau. I go first. <laughs> I go first. <laughs> Because <laughs> the other guy never gets to you because he's already on the ground. Pick one kick, you lose. <laughs> You're done. Alan, at Magic Live, we're gonna play Rochambeau. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say that. I'm not telling you which version that. of the game it's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I already know. <laughs> what if you don't have testicles? Can you still play? Can you still play? I go first. Uh, yeah, uh, then I then I definitely go first. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely go first. I just had to kick you to the ground at that point. <laughs> uh, well, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, thank um, you. You didn't so know much. what you were waiting. You didn't know what to expect. So you've been an awesome sport and uh, put up with us for a couple hours. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Blaze. Let's get hopefully. Um, let's hopefully play Rochambeau on Magic Five <laughs> if we get to meet. And <laughs> for a second, I thought you said Russian Bull. Uh, Russian Bull. Let's play like, Russian Bull. I was like, like, oh, like, oh, this is a new game. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, totally. Thank you so much for inviting me, Blaze. By the way, a long time ago, you invited me this, so finally we're doing it. And yeah, Happy this is on, this is the final tonight. Anthony says, "How come more people don't watch these?" That's our it might, be, it might be us really turning off a large portion of the viewers midway through when, yeah. we, when we get into count. Do we count one, two, three, or uh, yeah, yeah. the real the ones reason. are here? The real ones are here for the lasagna. That's what they're here for. Um, yeah, 100%. Well, should we tell them who we have on next week? Yes. Next week is Next a, a crazy episode oh, as well. I gotta send the myth the legend on. I gotta send this guy a message tonight just to remind him. Uh, but uh, uh, Fiddle and Johnny is right. He says views are overrated. Yeah. That's right because we on, know on, we have on my birthday. Next week we have yeah my birthday. The one, the only. Happy, enjoyed it, man. Should Thank we, you. Yeah. So we let him know. Should we? I yeah, I think we gotta let him know. Maybe on the count of three, though. Like, but like, wait, do we start on three or do we start on one or do we start on go? I think if we do three, two, one, go, and then we say the name on go, do I start counting? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good. Yeah. So I'll say go. go. I'm go. I'll start counting. <laughs> okay, I say so go. And okay. then you say three, two, one, go. And then when you say go, then then I'll say who the guest is. Okay. All right. Yeah. How's that? Okay. Okay. Go. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna count first. <laughs> oh no, no. You were gonna go. I thought you were gonna go three, two, one, go. And then on go, I go one, two, three, go. Oh, okay, we could do that. So yeah. okay, so I'm gonna go three. Two, 
One. Go. One, two, three, four. Oh, I five, thought I thought you were go. just counting. I thought you were, I thought you were just counting three and then. Oh, I go. thought I was just counting up. You know, like. Oh, okay. I'll just wait for you to say go at any time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you start, start over again. again. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we have the one, the only, Mr. Homer Leewag. Come on the show. It's going to be gonna awesome. Be it's going to be a great nuts. time. Oh, he's going to love it. Nobody spoil anything to should, him. Should we tell them? I'm really curious to see Homer here, actually, because I'm in shock. Them, should I we say what his. our secret is about Homer's episode next week? I guess not, because oh, maybe he'll I, research it. I don't know. It. Okay. Yeah, maybe yeah, he'll, research he'll research it. I don't, well, if he can get through to the center. That's the true. That is true. Dude, there's no way just, Homer's going to watch just, all the just, way to this point. No, okay. Let's just say it. We have a special guest coming on. Who's going to special guest. The Homer episode. Yeah. So, should, when should we, we announce it, should, should we, we, should I count down and then on go... You okay? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we have we've got Mr. Chris Kenner coming on as well. Uh, Chris is going to come on and surprise Homer on the lasagna Question. segment of the show because, as we know, we had Chris on about a what six or eight weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. And Chris has become a lasagna aficionado, uh, and so he is coming in as a lasagna consultant during the episode so stay tuned for that it is going to be a crazy episode uh homer actually makes a lot of pasta uh like his instagram is pasta all the time so i'm very interested to see if he's a lasagna guy as well it's just straight up pasta it's gonna be a blast it's gonna be awesome so uh we're gonna have homer and chris kenner on next week shh nobody reveal the secret yeah don't say anything. It's going to be a crazy episode. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you next week with another exciting episode. Thank you again to Alan Simonoff for coming on. Check us out on Patreon, allaccessmagic.com. .com? No, not Patreon. Patreon.com slash allaccessmagic. You can check us out. You can join us for game night next week on Tuesday. It's going to be a blast. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.